Hi, Scott Orwell with Cinema Magazine. 50 years ago, a particular song and movie kind of entered our consciousness. The movie was called Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and the song, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, actually hit number one and went on to win the Academy Award for Song of the Year. The song wouldn't be part of our consciousness if it wasn't for the vocal talents of our guest, B.J. Thomas. Uh, going back, looking Thank at you. this, what was your relationship to Burt Bacharach? Because I understand... He actually kind of made an overture to Ray Stevens to record the song first. Yeah, I think that actually they went down to a Nashville, uh, the Ray, the Ray has told me. And, uh, you know, he played the song for, um, uh, for Ray and Chet. And, uh, you know, I don't know. They just didn't, they didn't quite get it. And, and Ray had uh, uh, just, was just about to release a song by Chris Christopherson and he'd been trying, he said, he told me for three or four years to get a Christopherson song. And uh, anyway, they, it just didn't, it didn't work for them. And then I, I'd always heard that uh, Bert wrote the, that melody kind of with Bob Dylan in mind, you know, the falling on my head kind of thing. And uh, uh, so it, 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 it it, uh, it could have gone, you know, any number of ways. But I, I think uh, uh, one of the concerns of, of Burt Bacharach and Hal David was they wanted to record the song on somebody who, who was selling records. And I know Ray had just had a big hit record and I had ju just had Hooked on a Feeling. And so that was, uh, that was attractive to him. Plus, I had already been working with uh, Mr. Bacharach for a few months. I had moved... Um, you know, I was recording in Memphis, and things were going great in Memphis, and I was I was loving it down there. Uh, and the the label asked me to move to asked me and Gloria, we just got married, if uh, we'd move to New York. And, and uh, Florence Greenberg was her name, and she she said, "BJ, if you if you'll move up to New York uh, and start personally working with Mr. Backrack on finding some material," she said, "I'm sure that." y'all can find find some great songs and uh, and they'll do a session on you and uh, you know that sounded like a i just couldn't pass that opportunity up that sounded great because i had seen mr backrack and met met him at the scepter offices in in manhattan and uh, you know he was he was and still is this a really an awesome awesome dude you know i mean just so handsome and charming and a uh, and the way he played, and I, of course, I was very familiar with Dion Warwick's records and, and how Mr. Bacharach did. So, you know, I kind of was in the right place at the right time, and I got, the, I got the shot. So you get the shot, and you go into the recording studio, and as nature would have it, you have partial laryngitis. How much do you think that little hiccup in your voice led to the authenticity of the song? Yeah, I think it. I think it. It's almost like I was was supposed to have laryngitis. That was that was would have been a perfect scenario, because uh, and I had I had gone to the doctor the day before the session, uh, the bicycle scene session, and he told me he said, BJ, he said this is the worst throat I've ever seen, and he said I don't want you to even speak for two weeks, and he was telling me to get a pad and a pencil right now, and I was thinking, oh man, you know, so. Uh, I said, you know, gosh, you got to help me. So he gave me some uh, some things to shrink my vocal cords from nothing. I could just barely, barely talk. I really didn't know if I could sing or not. And I tried a little bit, but uh, uh, but it was a situation, uh, Scott, where, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was not going to show up. And I, you know, I could just picture the scenario. I was going to be show up there at rehearsal and he was going to say, man, we're not doing it like that. And, and, uh, but you know, I went. I, uh, I went out to his house, and uh, we started working on doing the song. And he had to play in the piano, and he never he never said a word. He he just instantly liked it. And uh, even one of the 20th Century Fox guys, when we were uh, at the session the next day, he, he said, "Hey, that's a good idea. You're trying to sound like Paul Newman is singing," you know. And I went, "Oh yeah," you know. So it was it was kind of something that. Uh, they could notice something wasn't exactly right, but uh, everybody seemed to like it. No one really said anything. Bert never said anything. So, uh, and of course, we re-recorded the song uh, six weeks later for the for the number one record version. The the uh, bicycle scene version was a little simpler and a little uh, uh, less overproduced. But 
you know, what a great memory. I mean, Ray Brown played the, the stand-up bass on the on the version we did for the bicycle scene, and uh, just because all the beautiful thing beautiful things that happened with that song are, are just uh, after all these years, man, just some of my most treasured. Uh, Memories, you know. Let's tap back into your memory because, okay, obviously the song goes number one as an artist. That is a supreme accomplishment and you, you, you're euphoric. But then you're asked to sing on the stage of the Academy Awards in front of this room full of the best of Hollywood. And so yeah. not only when I mean, you get to come out there as a gunslinger and you're shooting your way, but you have all these bicycles riding around you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was a huge production number. And, and as a matter of fact, I mean, you, you're not going to believe this, but this was kind of back in the day where they didn't send a limo for you. Uh, you and I had to take a taxi to the first rehearsal. And, uh, and uh, you know, for some reason, I, I guess they gave me the wrong address or whatever, but I, I couldn't find the building. And the, uh, it was just my bad. You know, I, I, so I missed the first rehearsal and they were quite upset about that. And uh, so they asked, they asked me, the, hey, buddy, and they said, do you want to do this or not? And I said, I want to do it, you know. But, so the second day, I make the, I make the rehearsal, and, uh, you know, it's just this huge uh, production number, and, and kind of, they've kind of rearranged and rewritten some of the song, and I had to really learn that quickly. And, uh, and I was thinking when we finished rehearsal, I said, you know, I think we're going to win this thing because why go to this much trouble, you know? And it was a special night for me, uh, you know, being, as you said, being in front of all those, uh, you know, royalty, American royalty, all those great actors and uh, around the great singers, Glenn Campbell and I were in the same dressing room. He was not nervous at all. He, he was cool as a cucumber. And I mean, I, I was trying to look like I was cool, but uh, I was just totally freaked. And uh, very, very nervous, but I, you know, I had something I had to do. I, of course, I was dressed as a, as a cowboy and I had to fire the guns off and then I had to walk over here and I had to sit on the steps. And so I had enough to do that it, it kind of allowed me to do it uh, in a more relaxed uh, uh, feeling than I, was, than I was feeling on the inside. But a, a very, very special. And then of course, Burt wins two Academy Awards and Hal David, uh, wonderful guy he won one and uh you know the governor's ball afterwards and uh, just did you have a fanboy you know, moment was there a particular star that you got to interact with that was oh my god this is cool well i was introduced by uh by uh, uh bob hope of course and then and then in the future after that i've worked with mr hope like a dozen times uh i, I would sing and then he would be funny and uh, of course, I, at the end of Raindrops on the on the telecast, I, when I walked off the stage, I walked right by Frank Sinatra. I didn't even see him, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was great at the at the Governor's Ball. You know, we Elizabeth Taylor was there. We we you know we spoke to her, and uh, we went over and looked at John Wayne. That was the night John Wayne won his uh, Academy Award, and uh, it, it was just of course Bert at that time was married to Angie Dickinson. And so when I went out to rehearsal, Angie Dickinson answered the door. And so that was like, I knew I was in rare, rare area there, but it was, it was beautiful. Uh, uh, one, one of the, you know, very few people have that experience because I guess if you added up all the performers on the uh, people who have performed on the Academy Awards, it wouldn't be a huge number. So uh, I've always, uh, counted myself as very fortunate and I'm, and down through my career I, I had a lot of fortunate uh, moments but that one tops tops everything so 50 years 50 years and you're still singing this song does it, does it stay fresh do some of the lyrics become more relevant over the years yeah they, yeah it becomes a lot deeper um, I'm, I really get the meaning of it it really means a lot to me it uplifts me Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you're, you're doing a show. Yeah, I don't know. You, my moods run uh, hot and cold throughout, uh, throughout. Uh, you know, when I'm performing, uh, and sometimes that song is just uh, uh, means just what I need. Uh, and it's been, you know, I, I worked. I did a very few shows with Bert because I had my own 
career going as he as he did, and I didn't have really have time to just show up and sing one song. Uh, so we only worked together a few times. But the the last time we worked together, or time before last, he said, "BJ," he said, "I apologize for raindrops." He said, "You had you had to do that song all these years," and I said, "You know, Mr. Backrack, <laughs> make no mistake, that is the best part." Of, of, of my career and I love it every time I do it. I, I'm not one of those guys that gets tired of, uh, uh, you know, gets tired of doing his, his uh, hits or his show because I have emotional and uh, uh, I have memories and emotions tied to all those songs. And so I really, uh, I really stay with it when I'm, when I'm, when I'm singing them. And just I, the like, last, I like to sing them. And last question for you, BJ. In doing my research, I thought it was kind of interesting that there were people at the studio and the two main actors were not initially happy with the placement of that song at all. Did you ever hear any feedback about that? Yeah, I, you know, eventually over the years, I, I heard you know the story about uh, Red, uh, Mr. Redford didn't want the, that pop song, I think the quote was, in his art movie. So, you know, they, they, can, they were making an art film, which to us was a Western, um, so he had a different perspective on it, but they they talked him into it, and I think it, it did become it. It had, was so effective, even with the bicycle scene, that I think he was persuaded that hey, that it does it does really really work with that. Uh, and and you know the the score uh, was done with very few instruments. It was all done vocally, you know, pa 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 and things like that. Uh, till it was, uh, it really made an artistic statement that was a little bit different. That some of us, you know, were not aware that they were they were going for. And and you know, I never met any of those people, I mean, Redford or Paul Newman or anybody with the movie. And I just read a book that Backrack wrote called "Anyone Who Had a Heart." And in the book, he said he never met he never met Paul Newman or Robert Redford or the director. He never nobody ever said. A word to him about the music either so then maybe that's just movie people i don't know <laughs> well first of all thank you so much for sharing your stories and your time with us it's just it makes us feel a little older than oh my god it's 50 years has gone by but what a great piece of classic cinema that you've been as attached to and music as well so BJ well, it's Tom been, a, been, been awesome for me something uh, that uh, i've been so privileged to be a part of and I've had that song to sing every time I perform so I've enjoyed enjoyed that and enjoyed talking to you pal nothing's worrying you Bum, ba, da, no. da, da, me. <laughs> that was worth it for right there BJ Thomas thank you so much this is Scott Orland till next time yes sir take care take care